Hello again, friends. Okay, so we have learned so much over just a short period of time, and so much has happened. So Mary and Joseph, they went to the town of Bethlehem, remember? And what happened in Bethlehem? They couldn't find a place to stay. And Mary was had the baby was ready to have a baby and that was going to be the baby that saves the world and so they were able to find a place to stay which was in a stable and so they had to stay in with horses and sheep and who knows what other animals it says but um, so that's where they stayed and that's where Mary had baby Jesus and they laid him in a manger and then what happens next who does God send his angels to speak to and tell who were the first people do you remember the first people that God sent his angel to tell about baby Jesus being born was three shepherds well it doesn't say exactly how many but there were shepherds in a field and they were keeping watch of over their flock of sheep and you remember that's what we talked about as a, a shepherd is is they keep they keep sheep and they take care of them so then the shepherds race to the town of Bethlehem and they got to see baby Jesus so that was so exciting for them and it's exciting to read about because when Jesus is born we've been waiting for this for for a very long time and so no one expected that the king of kings would come as a baby and that's just like God to do is just you know he he's like nobody else we know and he's just a wonderful God and um, he, he loves the world and he wanted to send a savior um, for his people and that's what he did by sending his son Jesus so now today we're going to talk about the king of all kings and so this is going to be found in the book of Matthew that is in your New Testament and it's going to be in chapter 2 and then so we're going to going to get to hear about three wise men so here's the story of the in the picture of the three wise men and they're pointing to the star do you remember the star that God put in the sky the brightest star in the sky so they're pointing to that star and so let's read about what happens far away in the east three clever men so clever means they were very smart they saw the very same star that the shepherds saw the star that God had put in the sky when Jesus was born and they knew it was a sign a baby king had been born they had been waiting for this star they knew it would come he's here they shouted he's here and I'm sure if you'd been there, you would have heard them laughing and dancing and singing until the sun came up. At dawn, they packed up their camels and wrapped gifts for the baby. And they brought their most precious treasures of all. They brought, you ready? These, this is important. They brought frankincense and gold and myrrh. So those were very expensive gifts for the, the baby Jesus. Special, sparkly, lovely, smelling, gleaming things, just right for a king. And so here's, we're gonna learn about their journey. So they're riding camels and they're taking a journey to the town of Bethlehem. The three wise men, um, actually, if you'd met them, you'd have thought they were kings because they were so rich and important looking. <laughs> So they set off, they rode their camels across endless deserts, up steep, steep mountains, down into deep, deep valleys, through raging rivers, and over grassy plains, night and day and day and night. For hours that turned into days, that turned into weeks, that turned into months and months until at last they reached Jerusalem. Jerusalem was by far the most important city for miles around, and as anyone can tell you, that's where a palace would be, and kings are born in palaces. So that's where they went. But they were there, they were in for a big surprise. They went to sing, see King Herod. Surely he'd know where the baby was. But in fact, he didn't. 
he didn't like the sound of a new, a new king. It made him cross, which means angry. He didn't want anyone to be king except him. But Herod's advisors told the three wise men what was written in their books, what God had said about the baby king. Go to Bethlehem. That's where you'll find him. Suddenly, the star they had seen in the east started moving again, showing them the way. So the three wise men followed the star out of the big city, along the road, into the little town of Bethlehem. They followed the star through the streets of Bethlehem, out of the nice part of town, through the not-so-nice part of town, and into the really not-nice-at-all part of town, down a little dirt track until it stopped right over a little house. But wait, that wasn't a palace and there weren't any guards or servants or flags or red carpets or trumpets or anything. Did they get it wrong? Or was this what God meant? So let me show you. Which house do you think was Jesus in the palace? I think Jesus was over there in this little house. They weren't expecting that. Sure enough, in that little house, there sitting on his mother's knee, they found him, the baby king. The three men knelt before the little king. They took off their rich royal turbans and gleaming golden crowns. They bowed their noble heads to the ground and gave him their sparkling treasures of frankincense, gold, and myrrh. Their journey that had begun so many centuries before had led three wise men here to a little town, to a little house, to a little child, to the king God had promised David all those years before. But this child was a new kind of king, Though he was the prince of heaven, he had become poor. Though he was the mighty God, he had become a helpless baby. This king hadn't come to be the boss. He had come to be the servant. So that's the end of the story about how baby Jesus came and how important that God thought the shepherds were. And then he gave a sign with the star and in the sky to lead the three wise men to the baby. And they had been waiting for many years um, for this king that they thought would be in a palace because that's where kings stay, right? But instead, where was, where was baby Jesus? Well, one, he was a baby. He wasn't a king that they had expected. They were going to bow down and worship a king that had a crown and a robe. But instead, they found this little baby in this little house that had originally been born in, in the manger. So it tells us a lot about God and a lot about how he does the unexpected all the time and how we can trust him no matter what. And he fulfills his promises. So when you promise somebody something, do you, do you fulfill it? Do you um, make it true? So that's what God did for us. He sent his only son to, to the earth to live. And then what happens after that is he lives and, and he ends up dying on the cross. And, but that was God's plan all along. That was the ultimate sacrifice, was sending his son. And Jesus knew he was sent to die just for me and you, for the whole world. And so that's something to think about and, and his proof of how much God loves us and um, that he would do that just for us. So again, I have a worksheet that I've shared and I would love for you to do this and you get to learn just so much more about Jesus and um, read some scripture as well. So thank you again for joining us. I hope you have enjoyed this story about the true meaning of Christmas and about why we celebrate Christmas and go share with your friends and ask them if they know why we celebrate Christmas. I think you'll be surprised at their answer. And if they don't know why, tell them. Tell them that it's Jesus's birthday, that Jesus was sent as a baby on Christmas. And that's why we celebrate that. And we, we say happy birthday to Jesus. 
So thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day, and hopefully I'll get to see you again. Thank you. Bye.